And Stuart, if I read that thing correctly, there's one two-year term left. And okay, okay. So, um, welcome to the Brisbane Open Space and Ecology Committee meeting on Wednesday, January fifteenth. Um, called to order, and we're only missing one current member, which is Kima. Uh, Sean is away. And that's it. So, um, and also, the city council is accepting applications for um, members of the Open Space and Ecology Committee. Um, there are a couple people up for renewal, and we've had a couple of people who are uh, going to pursue other interests for a while. And so, there are seats available and if you're interested, please apply. Um, applications should be into City Hall by January 31st. Yes. And they are available both on the city blog, and Stuart will personally give you one if you ask him. Or Sherry. Or Sherry. <laughs> yeah, I think, there are, I think we will have three people who will not be returning. Um, that would be Sean. Mm -hmm. Mary. Mary. And Elena. Except... I'm trying to convince you to take a two-year slot. Okay. Because there is one available. Mary's? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, then it would be Elena's and Sean's. Yeah. So it'd be two. Yeah. If you can, if you can convince her. Yeah. And then mine. I was assuming you were reapplying. I guess I will. Only if you really want me to, Stuart. I know I make your Wednesday night so much more fun. Um, so let's uh, adopt the agenda. Is there anything anybody wants to add to the agenda? I wanted to suggest three agenda items for our next meeting. I don't know if that's if this is the right mm, time. To, sure. Right time to do that. You, you want me to say what they are now? Oh, I just wanted to see if we could agendize them for next meeting because I realize we've got. Yeah, I mean, if you can tell us now so we can put them on the agenda, that'd yeah, be great. That'd be great. Let's okay. So, so one of them is. Uh, Quarry Road, the entrances to both canyons are really trashy up out there today. I picked up eight bags of dog poop. Uh, at the, in the entrance to Owl Canyon is really a big mess. The drainage channel is full of broken glass, paint cans, bottles. There's a whole can of cement something or other out there that was too heavy for me to bring out. And I ran into Lisa Greenlee while I was out there. She's a former member of this committee. And she said that uh, she has seen evidence suggesting that various Quarry Road truck drivers are using the entrance to Buckeye Canyon as a toilet. So we need to do something. I'm not sure what, but I propose that we discuss <laughs> the set of problems and perhaps organize a cleanup for the trash that's already there. I did bring a lot out with me, but it was a lot more than I was expecting and much more than I could collect and carry. But um, we also maybe need to do something about, I don't know, signage or exhortations or something to get people to pick up their own dog poop. Yeah, and there's a lot of litter generated by the skate uh, <coughs> skaters that use the yeah. ad hoc drainage ditches, their own personal little skate park. Yeah. And don't pick up after themselves. That's where a lot of the glass and bottles and stuff are. Yeah, absolutely. And at Owl, that was clearly the, the problem. Are those well, drainage ditches concrete lined? The one uh, drainage ditch at the base of Owl Canyon is concrete, and then they've added to it with making some jumps and other things like that. And it really. Um, That's it, clearly what the bottle of cement stuff was for. Yeah. And I left it out there. I turn, I tipped it back upright. But. Um, I left it there, but there are pieces of brooms. There are, there's a, just crap everywhere. There's just a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. But the potential sewage problem is also uh, rather serious. So we may need to send a letter to the quarry or something. Yeah. We may need to talk about trash cans, um, okay. signage. I don't know what. Okay. The second item is, and this might be. Uh, remind me a report from city staff. Um, sorry. I noticed that the teen center is closed or closing. So um, 
there's that building and I was wondering what plans are for it and whether we might want to do something with part of it. The third item is divestment. I'm going to a statewide divestment conference in Berkeley next week. Um, mostly concerning, this is this conference is mostly concerning uh, the divestment is initiative for CalPERS. And I understand that's where the city's retirement money is invested. And I do need to bring some kind of a sample letter, so I will work on bringing that next time. I just kind of tabled it because we've been busy. So, so those were the three items. Uh, also, I'd like to add that we should, uh, at our next meeting, review last year's work plan. And I should clarify, I mean, divestment from fossil fuels. <laughs> I thought you meant just divestment. We didn't, want to have any, we didn't want to own anything anytime. No, I, no, no, I knew what the topic was. You had talked about this before. Right, but I'm clarifying it for members of the public that may not they, know they don't what watch us. talking about. They don't watch us all the time? Mm. But they're watching us now. Okay. Just in, just in case anybody missed the meeting. <laughs> okay. The, the other item that we were thinking of potentially bringing back was having um, Maria talk about the tree permit, uh, tree permit removal. You had, you had asked at some point to have Maria come in and talk about how do trees oh, yeah. get to get to be removed. Um, the other question that came up at some point in the past was an invasive species ordinance, and the attorney did respond to me, and he says that would be a very time-consuming process to try and create, craft one. I mean, there are some places that have done it, but to try and craft it where, you know, it's not challenged. So if you want us, if, if you want, I can get a little bit more information on that and you can talk about invasive species. Yeah, that would be good. And garbage. Yeah. Um, the tree removal was to talk about... How people get permit permits to remove trees oh, okay. on private property. I think that's what people were... I think that was the question that was asked at a okay. meeting. Is, is there any way to encourage the removal of dead trees from private property? <laughs> well, that's what I was several. thinking. You can have Murray can come and talk about how how does that process work for people to remove trees. I mean, that's kind of what they try and remove is dead trees. There are a bunch around town. And there's going to be more. Yeah. And I think that we need to um, think about having an assistance program on that because the sooner we get rid of the dead Monterey pines, the healthier the other ones have a chance of maybe surviving a little longer. Okay. We're going to have a full agenda next time. Yes, we will. On to the real business of our what, what we need to do. Okay, so um, we're going to adopt the current agenda. All those in favor? Or is there a motion? Or is it I, I so move. Okay. There was um, something I wanted to talk about briefly, but I guess with I we didn't get it on the agenda, so I don't even know if we can. Uh, oral communications for items not on the agenda. Is this okay? I think so. You mean Depends what you wanted is. to talk about it tonight? Yeah. What was the item? See if it hmm? What was the item? I forgot. Um, I had asked you a little bit uh, or asked for some information about the things City Council was talking about on Monday with the um, liquid fuel storage. Right. Yeah. Um. Um, why can't my computer do that? You know, I think if you uh, if you want to talk about it, um, since this came up Monday night and it's going to happen before your next meeting, because I think they're going to talk about it on February third again. Mm -hmm. uh, with you can you know if three quarters of you would like to put it on the agenda tonight, you can. What is that actual item? Unfortunately, I I didn't get the um, documents, so I'm there's not a whole lot I'm prepared to say. The, the city is looking at adopting, it's through the buyer code, about how, where, how close liquid fuel store, liquefied gas can be, can be located next to residential, you know, which zones that they should be in and um, how close they are to residential, um, I think is what the topic that, um, that we're talking about. Yeah. 
and that's coming up at the next, I think they're going to review that at the next council meeting. Um, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was just a little curious to know um, a little bit more about it because I think that could possibly touch on some ecology issues. Um, and this is just a what, you know, like I said, I, I would like to have been more prepared and to have actually read it. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know, is this the point where we need to decide if we're going to talk about it or yes. shove off? <laughs> yes, you, I mean, you need to talk, you would need to decide now if you're going to talk about it tonight. Okay. Um, we do have a lot of stuff on the draft EIR that has to be done tonight. I mean, the other problem is John is the person who, either John or the fire department would be better, be the best person yeah. to discuss it tonight. This is something that's actionable by the city council on February 3rd? Um, they're t the answer is yes. But I think what they're doing is they're, I think they're going to have a second reading of an ordinance. Mm -hmm. about uh, for the for the fire code and in the fire code it talks about storage of as you would imagine liquid liquefied gas mm -hmm. at what volume well I mean if you think about it we have the gas mm -hmm. the liquefied gas over at um, on Bayshore mm -hmm. and then the tank farm mm -hmm. and then if there is you know we don't have any more planned to be sited in town but it talks about you know if we site more in town what zones they could be sited in, which, you know, and how close they can be to other types of And buildings. also the quantities. Um, I'm not quite Five sure. gallons, 50 gallons, 100 gallons, 100,000 gallons. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I've, I've not something I've been following other than sitting at the okay. meeting and hearing that they were talking about it. Just pay attention. <laughs> okay. I, I, for one, don't feel that we're able to discuss it well tonight and we have a lot of other stuff on it that we need to go over on the uh, comments that are to be submitted. Mm -hmm. So could could you send us a copy of the proposed ordinance, Stuart? Sure. And then if we need to make comment, we can sort of maybe do that, ha ha have a subcommittee meeting or something or I don't know what. Sure. Okay. You want to appoint a subcommittee now? Yes. Um, Barbara and anybody else? I'll be the clerk if I brought it up. But and Kima. And Kima. <laughs> <laughs> that will keep them. Okay. Okay. Or me. I don't care. I'm Barbara sorry. and Michelle. Okay. All right. So let's go on. Any oral communications for items other than the agenda other than the one we just discussed? Okay. Let's go on to a review and approval of comments. Um, there's a couple of things that are, I think are, we need to go over. Um, well, I have a long list. I do too, actually. And one of them is on the, uh, on the things that were included in the planning group that I think should still be in the comments on the EIR and how to, how to rephrase them. And I've made some notes. And then the other thing is I wanted to go back and make sure that we picked up some of the things that we discussed in the December 4th meeting and, and subsequently to make sure that those are included. And one is the citations for stoffer chemical on industrial way. I didn't see that yet. Um, another is um, search for hazardous waste supporting quotes from Dr. Lee's report. And then um, Natalie was going to find the Golder Associates reference. And I'm not sure exactly what that was referring to because it was a while ago. But if we go back and actually look at the notes or, or listen to the tape, we could figure out what that that is. And then the UTREP reference uh, to be added, as well as Peter Dreckmeyer's presentation about the Tuolumne Trust. Th those are in there. Those are in there. Okay, yeah. that one's in there. Okay, good. Both you, of them. Is the Golder Associates reference in there? I don't think so. Okay. What about Stafford Chemical? It's not in there yet, is it? Uh, yeah. It seemed like it was. M maybe because um, we were going to look at their other sites that were supposed to be super fun sites. Do you remember adding that, Natalie? Oh, wait a minute. They're listed, but... Uh, but you were going to find out the references and get some material on them to back that up. What, what section was that in? I remember looking at it, but it was so long ago. I, I could have sworn I found something, but... What section was that? It 
must be in hazardous waste, or I'm not sure exactly what section it was. So I just want to make a note that we need to double, we really, really need to follow up on that because that was uh, completely left out of the draft EIR. Um, it is mentioned. Then there were a couple of things that we had gotten along the way, and one was this document from uh, how does ground level ozone harm the environment? Remember this one? Right. Mm -hmm. Can we make sure that that's included with our comments? Uh, it's in there. It's in there. It's okay, in there. good. It is in there. I'm just asking, just double checking because I'm going Actually, through. I found the staffer. Uh, it's on page 31 of the comments. Of the comment comments? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it looks like there's a web address and URL included for the three others. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Go, go down the page, look, look at three. Can, can I uh, interrupt uh, briefly? Yeah. Um, Natalie, I, I made a bunch of edits in red. Um, unfortunately, this is a black and white copy. Yeah. So um, uh, can you tell me if they got incorporated? I or put them in there, and then I, I know it would have been in black and white, so I put your initials next to. And then the ones that I knew were yours and you wanted to delete, I just deleted. Yeah. Or I would, or I, <coughs> I made it distinguishable. Yeah, I just, I see some things here, and it's just, it's, it's hard for me to know, you know, because it, it's. Okay. Okay. May, may I ask, how, how do we want to go through this? I um, just got back from Denver, and so I didn't go through these until today. I didn't get to the planning comments at all. I made it all the way through the DEIR comments. Uh, and I have a bunch of changes. Do do we, should I go through them? Yep. I didn't go through the planning document. I went through the planning document and not the EIR. Okay. So let's go to way do we want to do it first? Um, either one, I just want to say if we could maybe do page by page. Yep. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. okay. And then just one other thing. We got this article, before we get into that, Warriors Arena Transit Blueprint for the America's Cup. Do you remember when this went around? Yeah. Can we make sure that the documentation from that is included too? It is. Okay. Yeah. I used it uh, because it was talking about the muni budget and so okay. I included uh, okay. the URL. Okay. Um, so uh, one more thing. Remember, Natalie, I sent you a page of links and references about roofing material. Mm -hmm. That's in there. It, it's in here now? Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, can we knock off definitions first? Is everybody happy with that? I haven't even looked sure. at it yet. Okay. It's just that the following terms need to be, need clarification, therefore a glossary should be included in the draft EIR. Oops. Then I was oh, um, good with all of those. For podium, uh, I retyped to add parking next to it, so I just wrote it. I already printed them, so I just wrote it for you, but it's That's typed fine. in there. Somewhere in the... Uh, water chapter there was something called a cmp i think it was they kept referring to that oops sorry CMP. that would be nice if that got glossarized <laughs> everybody else is doing it <laughs> okay so glenn since you went through these do you want to take the lead on going through the this part right now? Sure. Okay. Uh, first comment I had, I'm just going to talk about the ones I had a quibble with. And if you have one in between, speak up. Yeah. Okay. So page one. Page Mine three. all got typed in, so I'm, I'm hoping that they're all there. <laughs> and I will be as quick as I can. Okay. Uh, comment, I'm on page two of the comments, top one, page 3.9. Uh, it's not clear to me why we need to have contour lines running into the bay. I, I don't get it. Uh, wait, you're asking why there should be contour lines going into the bay? Yeah, I'm asking. Um, I don't understand the reason for the, for the comment. I don't understand why we need a map showing contours at or below sea level in the bay. Um, well, I don't know 
why it was there in the first place, but I'll tell you how I feel about it now is that I think it is important because um, <coughs> it shows, you know, how quickly it drops off the level of the bay. I'm not, I, I, I don't remember what the thing is, but I think it's fair to ask for those. I mean, it, it, the note I have is just a sea line contours. So, I mean, I think that was somebody made the comment that somebody would want to see what the contours of the. Yeah. And one of the things that's a problem is the siltation and the, the, the contours and the depth of the bay is being changed by the siltation from the project. Okay. So, and at this point, I'm more inclined to leave stuff in than take it out and let them respond to it. I hear you. I, but I want to be sure that all our comments are, are relevant. And we're asking for a lot. And I'm, I mm -hmm. feel strongly that some of these are really important. And we really, I really want to double down on it. And so... The fact that some of them are really important and we're doubling down on them doesn't mean that the other ones won't be responded to. Yeah, it just it's it yeah. didn't seem all that important to me. Well, I think if we are going to leave it in, we should specify that it's it's because of the issue of siltation. Okay, that okay. works. Just just a reason for it. Yeah, it siltation and also uh, just how deep the bay is. I mean, it makes a difference. Like when you talk about the lagoon and they talk about recreational activities in the lagoon and, it, and you know, you're talking about if you really can't kayak in, you know, 10 well, inches but, of water. But this is talking about the bay, not I the know. lagoon. I, I'm still a little questionable about that one. There are still questions, some questions about it. Uh, the second one is just a wording change. It says the voracity of the map. I don't think Okay. We really mean a voracious map. I think we mean a true map. Yeah, verac veracity, not veracity. <laughs> yeah, so V-E-R. It's a typo, yeah. A map that ate the world. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to be a typo monster about no, this. That <laughs> no, it's important. I mean. That yeah. is important. I want, the, I want the comments that we submit to look professional and <laughs> literate. <laughs> you wanted to have some veracity. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Uh, okay. The next one is the same page, 318. Um, this just. We talk elsewhere about Caltrain. Um, I'm not sure this. We, we need to make this comment here in the first place. Um, and this. This. Latter part of the comment, which says the overpass to the station has unusable elevators, which hinders access to the train, I think that actually is the more meaningful part of that comment, and it should be moved to someplace else, probably uh, where we talk about mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions or transportation impacts or something of that sort. At this point, I think that um, we have nine days left. Actually, now eight days left before the comments have to be submitted. I don't think that we want to spend time moving things around as long as they're where, as long as they're there, they're going to get addressed, regardless of what section they're in. All right. Th there are some uh, movement issues that are probably more important than this one. Yeah. So, this one's so okay, that's this fine. Okay. Uh, Three thirty-six on the bottom of the page. Um, I don't understand why we're worried about building height from sea level. It seems like. The relevant measure is from the land surface, not sea level. Because the land surface has changed dramatically. The height of the land surface sur land surface has been changing every day. And so I want it from a somewhat constant surface, sea level rise notwithstanding. Because we had terrible problems defining the surrounding area for the current uh, soils processing plant. I thought it was really clear in the document, but the staff doesn't think it's clear, and therefore I want it at some height that we can all agree is that's the height. And so I feel very strongly about that one, Jan. Okay, so I think, again, we need an explanatory note. Um, okay. You know, so, some explanation for, for this. Okay, and so the explanation is because uh, the height, the, the current baseline using the median, uh, you know, sea level 
using sea level is a, a fairly consistent height, not varying more than five to ten feet. Um, so how would you? So what, what you do is you say it should be done from mean high tide line, um, which provides a fixed point, as opposed to looking at land surfaces which have the ability to change with time. Yes. Perfect. Something like that would be. Okay. That sounds great. All right. Yeah, that works. Okay. Thank you. you. See, this is why I don't know more things because otherwise I'd forget those things. Okay. Next. Okay, 362. I just didn't quite understand this comment. Um, a pedestrian overcrossing over the Caltrain right of way in Pennell Avenue. This is 362. Um, maybe this comment should be reworded. Please clarify how one overcrossing will foster pedestrian circulation. I mean, it seems like an overcrossing will be better than no overcrossing. Well, right now they're considering the overcrossings as being the one at the Caltrain station and the Tunnel Road Bridge. They do not have any other overcrossings of the tracks as part of their plan, and yet they say that their plan fosters pedestrian circulation. It does not foster pedestrian circulation at all. Okay, then I think we need to reword it. Okay. Um, one is better than none. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we need to say one overcrossing seems inadequate to foster pedestrian circulation. Yeah, or, or the two, because currently there are two. Okay. So just a wording change. Okay. Uh, let's see. Four eighty four. I just I found that offensive when I read that. No, it's fine. It's just the wording of the comment does does yeah. not really make clear what what the point is. Okay. Um, for the next one is on page four. Uh, and the comment refers to page four A four. Um, and this this argues about the vegetation being disturbed. I think the vegetation is disturbed, so I think the original wording should stand. But we can also say that there is more native vegetation distributed over the site than is acknowledged. But it is disturbed. OK. So put disturbed and distributed. Um. My next comment is on the next comment, referring to page 4A5. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I didn't quite understand this. The water flow does change with the tide, but from a visual aspect of buildings block the low tide, I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know about the part of, I, I didn't, the comment was mine. But I didn't part. I don't remember the part about from a visual aspect. Will the building block the low right. tide? Right. I think what it is is would is if if the bay at at high tide versus low tide, what is the visual impact of the buildings on the ability for people to see the bay? So if it's at low tide, you have less of an ability to see the bay. If the buildings are there, then you do at high tide. So if you only take a picture at high tide then you're getting one look of what it is. Whereas if you look at it both at high tide and low tide, is there a difference in the visual, I the aesthetics of the bay? Yes. And I not just the bay, but the aesthetics of the creek. Yeah, I, I vaguely remember this conversation. I, I seem to remember it being about the creek. Okay. It's about the creek, not yeah. about the bay. I'm sorry. At that point. Because the but creek. But I think that's what the idea was. Yeah. Because at low tide, if they make it like this big steep thing, at low tide, you look like you just have a big old ditch rather than having the the creek kind of mm -hmm. layered in so that it still is visually appealing at low tide instead of high tide so the and that it is a very important riparian area um, so the that needs to be re reworded a little bit but from a visual aspect will the buildings it's really not about the buildings. It's about how the creek looks at low tide, too. Okay, it just wasn't very clear. Yeah, it wasn't very clear. 
Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, next, 4B37. Page. Uh, I have to find it myself. 4B37 is on page 8. Uh, let's see. Um, this is cogeneration is supposed to include, is supposed to mitigate air quality impact. Is that the, I don't remember whose comment it was. I don't either. But I'm I not sure that it will. Mine. I think it has to do with not using uh, gasoline powered uh, landscaping. Well, so that's there. It says use of electric or manual landscape equipment, maybe we should say, rather than gasoline powered. Yeah, equipment. it already says uh, rather than gasoline, I added the option for manually um, landscape equipment. Um, but I'm not sure how cogeneration got lumped into this particular one. I'm not either. And cogeneration might be a good greenhouse measure, but I'm not sure. Um, that it really fits right here. Agreed. I so so maybe strike the first part of it. Um, yeah, I think it does belong somewhere. Uh, let's just make sure it's in somewhere else. I kind of feel it like it is in somewhere else. Okay, cool. I included it in the greenhouse section. I think maybe it was like a cut and paste issue. Something got. Yeah, <laughs> there. Are, I found a lot of those, and so mm -hmm. that's what some of this was all about. Let's see. The next one four C two. Require use of electrically powered. No, it's 4C2, uh, which is on page 15. Um, I think this is a wording issue. It says lack of habitat does not mean that the species will live in a less than optimal habitat. I think it means lack of habitat does not mean that the species will not live in a less than I'm sorry, which habitat. comment again? 4C2 on page 15. Lack of habitat does not mean that the species will live in a less. I think there's a missing word. I think it means will not live. I suspect what you meant to say is just because the habitat isn't optimal doesn't mean the species won't live there. Yeah, this wasn't actually my comment, but um, lack of habitat does not mean. Yeah, that's right. I think it should say not, will not. Okay. Okay. And then later in that same comment, this sounds as though, instead of this sounds at. Okay. Um. What you might want to add after that then is that um, species should, you know, should be identified r rather than by probabilities, but by actual sightings. Yeah. Yes. I think you should add that comment. Okay. May maybe. Make it so. Yeah. Ooh, it's a card. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that because, um, oh. that's so, sub that's so subjective. I mean, who have you got looking? Do they want to see it? Just because you don't see it there this time doesn't, doesn't mean it's mean not going to be there, there next season. Yeah. I, think I agree with Barbara on that. That makes sense. a dangerous thing because they did such a poor <laughs> bioassessment that I wouldn't trust them to do any better. Okay. Uh, just, just another little quibble, 4C4. Uh, 4C4 what? Oh, uh, the one about lupin. Um, Wait, 4C4? And 4C14. It's, okay. it's still on that yeah. page. Um, we, should, we should make it really clear by saying lupin are not a grass. They are a nectar plant. Yeah, they're not a grass. That's clearly what yeah. the comment meant, right. but it should just say that. OK, 
Okay, next, page 17. The wording thing again. Page 4, C, 40 to 41. Mitigation measure 4, C, 1B states that removal of trees will be checked for nests prior to removal. Yeah. I think that should just say that trees will be checked for nests prior to removal. Yes. Okay. Moving on to 4D34, which is on page 18. Um, yes, pile driving can go into bedrock. Bedrock may have artifacts, but, but if it's under tens of feet of mud and landfill, it's not clear how we will know that there are artifacts there and how they can be recovered. So I just, um, I don't see the point to the comment. Um, I think that I did not make the comment, but I think that um, what they're saying, I don't think the bedrock might have artifacts that can go into bedrock. Um, I would say that the, all the underlying substrata might have arti artifacts, both um, of a paleontol paleontological, however you say it, you know, fossils and uh, or archaeological. It just seems to me that it's going to be pretty hopeless to recover any artifacts with all the landfill trash and stuff. And, and most archaeologists say that if you don't, if you don't have a good idea of the layout of, of a site, that doesn't have much archaeological value. So I, well, would, I would favor striking that comment myself. Um, I don't think so because I mean, here's an example that happened out there. They when they were building that sewer thing, there was two uh, flatbed schooners out there that they discovered in doing the excavation mm -hmm. and the pile driving, and they went down and they studied them, mm -hmm. took the artifacts, did photographs, took whatever artifacts they could find, and then reburied them because they could not. They determined archaeologists determined that they could not be restored. You know, that, that it was too challenging and too expensive to restore them. But they did study them, photograph them, and take what artifacts from it they could, and and mapped where they were, which was very important. Okay. And so therefore, having it in there means that they have to pay attention to that if they instead of just ignoring the fact and blasting right through whatever might be there. And they'll know when they do pile driving because they have core samples mm -hmm. that come up with the pile driving. Okay. So maybe. So I don't think that it's necessary. Let's leave out the bedrock part. Yeah, leave out the bedrock. You might also want to ask the question is what method will be used to, con to, examine. to examine core samples and preserve any arche archaeological artifacts? That are found in core samples. That sounds good. Salmon. What methods will be specifically used to examine core samples? Right. Core samples and determine. Right. Something like that. Determine um, recovery. You know, value uh, of possible recovery and possible recovery. Because otherwise, they they could have carte blanche to just blast or whatever without having to stop and, and think about it and examine it. All right. No, that sounds better. The bedrock part really threw me off. So yeah. So I was thinking of Fred Flintstone there, I guess. <laughs> if we discover Fred there, that'd be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll really make money. Uh, what else, what's the next one? Uh, are you having any, Barbara, for going along? No? Okay. 4E. Oh, this one was kind of messed up. This is 4E11FF, page 19. Okay. Um, most of the way down the page, something got cut and pasted out of order. And um, if you look at the second paragraph from the bottom, 
the last couple sentences, starting with, it would also be useful to reproduce MACTEC slash Amex cross, and then there's M. Gudekantz 4E, 29 September 2013. Oh, I see that. Um, so I don't know if there's something missing or, or what, but it looks like something that just got inserted by mistake because cross, oh, cross so sections of the slave okay. OU. So, so I think that just that one part, M. Gudekantz 4E, 29 September, yeah. 2013, page one needs to be removed from that. Do you see it? I don't know if there's any way to check and see if anything got left out or not. Yeah, it'd be good to go back and uh, it had Mary's original comment. Yeah, I'll go look at it. Okay. And uh, see, just double check. I have your eagle eye, Glenn. This is awesome. Uh, it's my professional editorial experience. I um, I got all the way through both documents, but so, I just, only yeah. focused on my. <laughs> so looking at 4E11, Natalie has a comment there. Uh, map 4E5 is a misrepresentation of the present site condition since this map is Oops. based on data taken from the 1960s. Wait, wait, where are you? Where are same, we? Same page, we're on page oh. 19, 4E11. Where, and Natalie has a comment. This, may be, this comment may be removed as adequately addressed in another comment. How about if we just remove that? Remove her comment? Yeah, remove her comment. Just leave that one there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. For F1, page 22. So, a 4E40. Oh, 4E40. Mm -hmm. That's also on page On page 21. 21. Um, so there's two 4E40s. There's four E40s. Yeah. They're all different. Okay. They are. And you were 4E on page 22? Uh, I'm sorry, 4F1. Yeah. One. Um, Robert, yeah, the first, the first comment under 4F. Uh, I'm actually on page 23 because that comment laps over two pages. Yeah. Barbara had one on 22. Do you see that, Barbara? It's at the top of 20. No, I hadn't yet. Oh. Uh, 4E, it's the third oh, one I down see. on page 22. Well, you, actually, there's one in uh, the first. Suggest replacing maybe with is. Okay, all right. About these two comments are redundant. Did Maybe the redundant one got taken out and not the. Okay, we can just remove yeah, that then. Let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah, no, it looks like they're both here. Like this comment got put in kind of twice. Yeah. And so maybe we need to go through and pick the best from each one uh, and make it into one coherent comment. Where? I'm not, I'm it's a, about the Bay Mud, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mentioned many, many times that the Bay Mud might fail. I think we should leave it. Let them answer each one because what if one is phrased good well and one's not? So I'm okay with that. So take out these two comments are redundant and leave okay. them. At this point, I'm in the more is better category rather than risk leaving something out or not saying it the right way. Okay. And the whole Bay Mud thing is not crazy. Um, so you back to four. Uh, F1. Or F1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, toward the end of the comment, it says, for example, the first paragraph states that continued warming is predicted to increase global average temperature between 2 and 11 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years. But the life of the proposed project is 50 years, not 100. Statements such as this are misleading. I don't think there's anything misleading about it. Um, 
there, there's nothing wrong with saying that continued warming is protected, predicted to increase average global temperature between 2 and 11 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years. So, so I, I would like to strike I that. I think that the, I think that the pro why this comment is here, if I remember correctly, was because the part where it says this, um, here, I wrote, continued warming is projected to increase the global temperature to 2 and 11 degrees over the next 100 years. Half the life of the project, why no sea level rise, it, why is sea level rise not at properly addressing the plan? That was the question. Uh, that's the question I had on this. There, there are a lot of other comments about sea level rise in here concerning how, you know, flood potential and um, water penetration into the landfill. So, it, although it really doesn't really do it very well. I mean, right above it, it says, in order for the public to fully understand the potential impacts of climate change, the topic of sea level rise must be expanded on. Um, we're on page 4H7, 4H8 does state how high the sea level is expected to rise on site, but this should be also stated in this section. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're really trying, I think what the, what the real comment is trying to get to is, like the is that next sentence, the environmental setting does not address issues specific to the baylands. So whereas the global average temperature is supposed to rise 2 to 11 degrees, I think the comment is what's going to happen to this project over the next 50 years, not what the global average is. Because if the global average is a 2 to 11 degree rise, but that's happening in Canada where it's rising 2 degrees in order to balance out that 2, you might be getting a 15 degree rise here. I think that's kind of where it's trying to get to. The, th the thing is that they, they haven't focused it that precisely and a lot of these temperature projections depend on what we do or fail to do about greenhouse gases. Yeah. So, so there's no way that, that you're going to get a specific weather forecast for, for the Baylands. Um, I have another thought and that is that um, I, my sense of humanity <laughs> is that if uh, people read over the next hundred years they have a tendency to think that that's so far out they don't have to care right. sometimes. So um, would possibly a positive tact to be, say, that we would like a 50-year and a 100-year projection so that people have to deal with it sort of in the scope of things that they're used to thinking about? Would that be a beneficial? But would in over 50 years, I mean, my guess is the, the temperature change over the next 50 years would be a smaller temperature change than over the next 100. Correct. And then people will sit there and say, oh, it's not much of a big deal. Whereas if you look at it over the hundred, it's a bigger deal. Yeah. And th I think the real okay. question That's is. That's valid too. I think the real question is, what's the impact on the Baylands, mm -hmm. not what's the impact in the Great Lakes? Right. So, and I understand the idea that we haven't gotten that fine of a definition, but at least that, I think the comment is to trying to get that conversation to be part of the document. So, so maybe what we want to say is that in the introduction to the section, they could mention that um, temperature change and sea level rise are going to affect flood potential and the potential for water intrusion in the baylands and, and let it go at that because I don't think, you know, they, they don't have that level of specificity about how much temperature is going to change or how much sea level is going to rise even, and especially not within 50 years. So, so if the point is to bring the Baylands into it, then I think examples of how, why this is germane to the Baylands would be more appropriate than asking for, for specifics that can't be given. Yeah. Sure. As Glenn says. <laughs> 4F12, it's on the same page. This has to do with the Bay Area Air Quality Management District failing to comply with CEQA when it adopted its 2012 thresholds of significance. And the comment says that 
because the court set aside the, the BAA QMD thresholds, um, these thresholds should not be used to determine thresholds of significance for the Brisbane Bay Lines EIR. Um, and the document should adopt another threshold of significance which will be upheld through the court system. First of all, there's no way that you can guarantee a specific threshold is going to be upheld through the court system. It depends on lawyers. Secondly, uh, I'm oh. not aware of any other thresholds besides the BAAQMD. I mean, if somebody knows that there are some, great. But California is sort of in front of the pack in determining these, you know, thresholds like this. So my understanding of the reason that the court told BAAQMD to back off was that it didn't file an EIR, which is really, in that case, sort of a technicality. I don't think it really has much to do with whether the thresholds themselves are any good or not. So, so I, I would like to strike this comment. Unless somebody has another set of thresholds that they would like to recommend using. Why don't we change the bottom part? Uh, therefore, the BAQM standards should not be used as the only, should not be used and I think what the concern that was expressed at the time was that if the BAAQMD standards are not withheld by a, are not upheld by a court, then they are not a measure are not worth they're not the baseline that should be used as part of this document, okay. and therefore there should be another thing that has been upheld by a court to be used as the measuring tool. I don't know what it is, but. That's, I think that's where the conversation, yes. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm I, trying to remember the conversation as it yeah. was discussed yeah. at that time. Well, I think that was what the concern was, is that if this one isn't usable, there should be one that they should find that is usable. My, my recollection of the conversation was that people didn't like the BAAQMD's threshold, which, no. which may or may not be true, but. Um, this, in, the is this the 4.6? This is where F12. Um, no, this is the. Um, on March 5th. Yeah, this is yeah. 4.6 per capita. Yeah. Well, the, right. Annual per capita greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, I don't object to them using the standard, although I do think that that standard's kind of laughable, <laughs> personally, but. Um, it's, it's a lot less than the existing one. It's a right. lot lower than the than the average per capita annual emissions are right now. Right, right. but I, True. Th I, th True. I think what the conversation was from the person who made it was that if it's not going to be, if it's not usable as a standard, mm -hmm. why use it as a standard? That was my thought at the time, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then and the risk is there won't be any standard. And I think what the thought at the time was is that there should be something that was a st that is a standard that can be used. Well, um, that, I mean, I just, I'm just trying to, as I said, I'm just trying so to yeah. flesh out what the conversation that's was. That's a good point. So let's say. I, 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 before I start attacking this particular standard, I'd like to know what the other standards are and if they're even worse. Okay. <laughs> Personally, I mean, it could be that the AAQMD is going to get their ducks in a row and file their EIR, and this standard will become upholdable by the time that, but I don't know. There's a lot of maybes there. Okay. I'm just not uh, really attached to this one way or the other. All right. So let's strike it then. I wish there was some way to modify it so that it included the BBA and QMD standards and, you know, other standards, to explore other standards that, if there are any. Yeah. Yeah. So can we add it to explore, other, not take it out, but explore other standards? So as or what other standards are there? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. So as what opposed, other right. standards? Well, you should, as opposed to saying the document should adopt another threshold of significance, which will be upheld by this court system, is the document should um, document other standards. standards and the most stringent should be used as the threshold. Uh, oh, I'd love that. For that. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> thank you, Stuart. Yes. Yeah, the, the risk is without the BAA QMD, there would be none or something much. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But I can understand. I understand the point that was made at the time as well. If this is going to be upheld, and this is yeah. the only standard in the document, and then therefore there's no standard in the document. 
Yeah. I think that was what the concern that was. That was exactly my concern. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, another thing I remember. Oh, you're a good steward. Okay. Did you? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> What's the next? Do you, do you understand all that to rewrite that? Yep. Okay. I'll ask um, Stuart if I don't remember. Okay. Next. Um, this is in section 4F, which is still on the same page. Uh, no, this, this, this really gets very confusing. Let's see. General comments on 4F. Now I'm lost. I can't even find which page. <laughs> Number one was mine, and I think the gist of it was that this particular section of the DEIR is particularly unreadable. So where's that? Uh, general comments on section 4F, number one. Oh, I see. Uh, 4F. But I go on a big rant about writing. I, I guess um, I felt like this whole section needed to be reorganized. I mean, it, it starts, it goes through, and then it starts over and it goes through. There's, there, um, people's comments are very separate. They repeat each other. They need to be kind of reorganized, I think. I don't think that we have time to reorganize them. Probably not. So, so never mind. All right. Sorry about that. I mean, I think that they will get addressed even if they're disorganized. Okay. The 4G section. On page. I'm uh, trying to find it. Oh, on page 28 contains comments labeled 4E, which seems to be duplicates. Looks like a cut and paste program, so or problem. So on page twenty-eight, you got a couple comments concerning four G, three point eight, three point twelve, and then four E dash one, four E dash forty one and forty two. Oh, you know why? Uh, These were comments that we decided to put in both sections because one was oh. about and the other was hazardous material. Because it's okay. the cross contamination of the aquifer, but when they um, it's the bay mud Fails. Okay. All right. And that is why they are in both sections. So maybe if we just put like um, a lead in sentence above those two. Yes. Okay. That'll be fine. Okay. Does that make sense? Anyway. I was just thinking. Why I read that somewhere before. And you although did. And we some, did something to the effect that although these things relate to 4E, um, it seems as if that this, these kinds of comments are also hazardous re related to hazardous materials and therefore should be okay. addressed in the section as well. Good yes. enough. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Um, there are a couple missing lines from Fred Lee's, from the quotations from Fred Lee's report. I don't know how important that is, but um, but it could be. If you look at page 30, uh, second paragraph, there's a whole line there that's illegible. Oh, yeah. Um, again, I don't know how important that is, but we are relying on Dr. Lee quite a bit, so we need to fix that. Seemed like there was one other place where that happened, but I can't remember where it is. If you can't find it, uh, you can always email me, or if you find more. Okay. Oh. Um, 
moving on, 4H37. What page? 39. Thank you. Uh, I realized that John Englander was the keynote speaker at the Sea Level Rise conference. And apparently he did, in fact, say minimum three-inch sea level rising next century. That's just silly. It's more like three feet. And I looked up the uh, IPCC fifth assessment report. They're talking about meters, not inches. So I think we should strike this reference to the Englander comment because it really significantly understates the amount of sea level rise. I, he just, somebody made a mistake at that conference, which is really too bad. <laughs> yeah. But but it's just plain wrong. Which comment was that again? This is 4H37 on the bottom of page 39. Okay, on page 37, Barbara, you have a comment about redundant at the very top of 37. Mm. Page 37. Yeah, on our, our page 37, Barbara, I see you have a comment redundant with above comment. Mm -hmm. You just want to strike your comment and just leave both of them in and just. At this point, yeah. Because I knew that's what Michelle was going to say. That's why I suggested it. I'm sorry. We need, because we need, we still have the planning comments to go through as well. Yeah. When, when we get through this section, we're going to take a five minute break before we do the planning comments. Okay. I told my wife, don't accept me until midnight you're done. Because uh, I right. want everybody to feel all fresh for that section. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I'm being too picky. No, no. we're not being picky. Uh, okay, we're going to strike. This is important. There. It's very important. Okay. Yeah, this, um, so let's go back to H37. On page 39. On page 39. And you want to strike? And, yeah. Okay. Um, I think we could delete the whole sentence saying from the Sea Level Rise Conference. Um, we'll exceed preparations now. Yeah, I think we could strike that whole sentence and keep the following sentence, which talks about a 1.4 meter sea level rise, which yes. is much closer to what mm -hmm. the standard um, the standard estimate is. Okay. Is that okay? I feel we really appreciated that you went and, and did that and. Found out, I just just English, you know, six to eight inches, not. <laughs> well, and I guess Jackie Spear repeated that, which it's which is too bad. It's around. I guess it's three inches was wrong. what everybody felt comfortable with. I don't know. Right. Uh, let's okay. Four mm, yeah. J. Right so Barbara, you're yeah, your I've root got stuff come is on, on page forty. Yeah, page forty. So um, I have struck out all of number two. Uh huh. Because um, as much as the environmentalist mantra mantra has said for years and years that roofing material um, affects the water quality. Um, at the, the actual research is showing now people have actually gone out and measured and, and, and that seems totally intuitive and logical, right? And we all believed it. But it seems like um, people have actually gone out and done the tests and it turns out it doesn't make a whole lot of difference what your roofing material is. Okay. Um, but what I did find is that, um, and through personal experience, is that it doesn't make a big difference in how much water you get. Oh. And so I had wanted to, and um, it's, this is not reflected in this copy, but in my copy that I sent Natalie, I had struck out all of number two. Okay. Um, and put something in um, that ef the effect of what I just said, and I'm not sure if it should be a sequel comment or a planning comment or both. Well... Why don't we put it in the mitigation of stormwater? Yeah. Okay. Part. Sure. Okay. Okay. So strike number two. 
But then you have the next comment, consider the following for a possible planning comment based on the yeah. link that Natalie sent and the further research. It looks like roofing material. So if we start maybe with the sentence, roofing material, like, yeah. like start with the sentence with roofing material has a small effect on the quality of water har harvested. Mm -hmm. uh, so much for the larger factor is for the pollution absorbed from the atmosphere prior to precipitation, precipitation in particular. And have that both in planning comments and in mitigation measures. measures. So storm stormwater, uh, which is four O, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that you just need to go through and take out my little bits of editorial. Do we need to take our five minute break now? Okay, due to bad feedback on the live feed, we are going to take a five minute break.
the first, oh, there's still not there. It's the first comment, 3-17. Three, three oh. um, part of the comment is relevant to noise and vibration, but part of it isn't. Oh, I see. Yeah, I noticed that. So. Do you mark it? It's actually, it seems like two comments in one. Yeah. Kind of. um, this is another uh, situation where we have a comment. We're on 4J. We're resuming after our break. Um, resuming uh, chapter 4J. The first comment is page 3-17, which talks <coughs> is, is referring to what was talked about in the site um, description. And uh, the reason why this comment is repeated here, or actually here, in this section, um, was moved to this section from 3-17 because uh, of the part about the noise, but this should actually be back in 317, and then the noise part of it uh, should be repeated here. Yeah, so I think just the final sentence needs to be in 4J. Yeah. Yeah. Information about stabilizing the industrial park. Mm -hmm. But the whole comment needs to go back and be placed back under 317. Are we sure it's not already there? It's not there either. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. That's and then 4E45, having tamping is not addressed in the noise section of this document, only periodic pile driving. Yeah, that was fine. It yeah. made sense. It's just the, All the right. first part of that other one did not make sense. Next. Uh, then all the way up to Chapter 7. I have something on um, page 51, 4P11. Okay. There are... Um, Three comments from 4P11, and they're all pretty much all three identical, if I remember correctly. Um, oh. We could maybe just say, change it to say paragraph two and paragraph six, instead of having that be two separate comments, and save a teeny bit of paper. <laughs> so do you want to combine those comments to make sure that they're all? <coughs> sure. I'll take care of that if you want. Okay. Next. Um, oh, there's also on 50, the, the question, when does the recycled water plant get built, is posed multiple times in the section. I just thought once was enough. It's pretty redundant. It's also on 40-29. I think it's okay to mention it more than once, actually. Cause it's like word for word at the bottom of page 48. Is it? Yeah. Well, one, one says, what's the numerical threshold, and the other says, when does it get built? Okay, so let's leave them both in there. Okay, all right. Um, because one of the things that is uh, really challenging is because it's this is a program EIR and not a project EIR the timeline up here is is very extended mm -hmm. and there's no good sequencing of events um, and triggering events in specified in this document and it makes it really really challenging to actually implement it mm -hmm. um, so I I'm fine with mentioning it more than once What's the next um, one? Uh, the next one I had was on chapter seven. Page. Hold on. Seven, five, six. Oh, yeah. Um, this was my comment. I had a whole list of stuff, and it's all out of order. So on page 56, page 7, 5, and 7, 6, starts out, I suggest the following additional mit mitigations, and the only one mentioned is 
building commissioning. And then the numbering is really messed up here. Then the, it picks up again toward the bottom of the page where it says what is commissioning. That should be moved up so that it follows the following language is copied, quoted from the California Commissioning Collaborative. As for that, okay. And it doesn't need a number by it. So, Natalie, where where it says what is commissioning, where the three is, mm -hmm. that goes up to see where it says www.cacx.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes up right there. Mm -hmm. And up. Uh -huh. Pardon? Remove that comment down to be combined with one, two, three. Did you want that? Can I just go and show? Can I just yeah. go show her? Oh yeah. Yes, please. So this okay. whole chunk, starting here and extending onto this page, should all be moved up to follow this. Or all of this moved right in front of it. Yeah, but then the pages are out of order. So oh, okay. Just, okay. just this whole big block. Okay. That's all. Mm -hmm. And then it needs to be renumbered in an appropriate way. Um, on, uh, on that same page on 56, page 7-3 uh, in the last sentence, the word depleting should be rephrased to say destroying. It really, um, you could strike that. Strike that? Yeah, using but not depleting whatever resources. <sighs> Where are we? At the top of page 56, this is for 7-3 says in the last sentence the word depleting should be rephrased to say destroying but that's just me being angry about this are you sure Natalie well what it says what the sentence is mitigation measures are often consistent with the notion of meeting present human needs without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs by preserving natural systems that we depend on for economic, recreational, and societal value and using but not depleting limited resources such as water, air, land, and energy. Okay. Because really, you know. That's fine. Yeah. Also just one general suggestion and it's, it's germane to my comments on page 56 and, and elsewhere. It would be good if for quoted material, it could be indented or the font could be changed or something so that it's more clear that it's quoted material. Okay. Quotation marks also help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's go on to the planning uh, comments because um, one of the things that is, one of my concerns <laughs> here is that the planning comments do not have to be commented on by the draft EIR. So when you move comments from the draft EIR into planning comments, they no longer get addressed by the draft EIR. And that's of concern to me because um, a lot of these comments, I think if they're reworded slightly, they should be included in the draft EIR comments because that's where they were made. And so that's a problem. And so um, but then at the very beginning of the planning comments on page 2-6, it says, the definition of sustainable development found under the overarching objections section should be OSEC should come up with a different definition. Should that be removed or not? I mean, that we never did come up with uh, another definition. Wow, I would really like to have done that, but the idea of tackling it with, <laughs> what, seven days to go is just like, yeah. oh my gosh, silly, silly, silly us. I also think, you know, the city has a sustainability committee and, and we're going to pay more attention to that 
issue. So, um, and it's tricky because there are a lot of different definitions of sustainability around. Uh huh. So maybe we could change that comment to say the definition of sustainable development found under the overarching objectives sections uh, should be redefined uh, in accordance with the work done by the Sustainability Committee. Or just City of Brisbane. I don't, yeah. Because um, the whole idea was that in their executive summary, we didn't feel that their comment, uh, their definition of uh, sustainability was correct. But that's just a small one compared to all the other ones. Yeah. Okay. So that one's a question. Okay. The next one is um, 2-9. Two na two impact 4B-2 found under significant avoidable air quality impact. <coughs> it is unclear how a project can be approved if significant unavoidable impacts exist after mitigation. Please explain the process of writing a, and adopting a statement of overriding consideration. That one, I'm okay with that going into the plan and comments. Um, yeah, okay. But under project three, uh, Air quality section does not address precisely where the pollution from the increase in burning fossil fuels will travel, but they say it will not travel in Brisbane. I, th I think that needs to be asked where will it travel and what will be the impact. We're discussing the doc questions for the, plan the planning thing versus having them in the planning part versus having them in the comments. And I'm concerned under project description, it talks about um, it says where where increase in, in burning fossil fuels will travel, but they say it will not travel to Brisbane. Well, I want to know where, I think we need to ask the question, where will it travel and what will be the impact? I um, sent a whole list of links, a whole page of lists and quotes about, you know, airborne pollution and traveling uh -huh. um, on Monday or Tuesday. So while and that so there could be some good information in there that I didn't see in the um, it's so hard to think of things that aren't there, right? Right. I didn't see it being added to the CEQA comments and some of that some of that might also be relevant to what you're talking about in the planning comments. Right. I thought we did add it to the CEQA comments because I remember that meeting and it was Mary Gudekans who who was mentioning that a lot of the pollution from the Bay Area ends up in the Central Valley. So I'm so sure that we said something about that. Yeah, there's some stuff said about that, but I pulled <coughs> together a whole. I was not okay. satisfied with the body of evidence that we had presented, so I pulled together a okay. whole bunch of stuff on Tuesday. For so that. this needs to be included as a question in the draft DIR. Where does this pollution travel to? and what will be the regional impact of it. Do you know where I'm at, Natalie? No. Okay. So I, I added Barbara's, something she sent me on, I think it's in general comments. On page eight. Which eight? Let's see. I, I had eight to flip through really fast. Um, DEIR comments? Eight on the, the DEIR. Well, comments, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, this, oh, maybe it is here. Yeah, it is here. Okay, thank you, Natalie. I, I had to flip through really quick to keep up with Glenn, and I overlooked my own work. So, so did we ask the question, where will the? No, no, this was just evidence that pollution does travel a lot further than the 1,000 feet or whatever that they look at in the, okay. in the Right, so, so, um, so one of the questions, so what it does say on page eight, it says pollution from the Bay Area travels to the valley from operations and construction. Winds will blow pollution east of the project site. What methodology may be used to assess the damage from the baylands development? Yeah. Okay. So is that, I think that gets to the question mm -hmm. that you're asking. Yeah. Okay. And maybe if we just do a little, make it, make it a little bit more regional. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And if we put something more like more of a regional comment in eight, that might get to what you're saying now. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay, then page 3-4, um, we talk about it being con inconsistency between the statement and the map. The neighborhood is not adjacent. Um, I think that needs to be in here because it needs to be consistent and it's not just, I don't know why it got moved to planning. Okay, and the question I also have is why is there an inconsistency? Yeah, oh, it's back in the secret comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, and ask and add to it. Why is there an inconsistency? And then on three thirteen, check the sources listed for maps I four. I just boo booed. That should be back in the section that says what are the sources for the four maps. Um, and then on three dash forty, um, the question I have is how exactly was the community proposed plan developed? who wrote it, and who paid for it. This is on 3-40. Uh, the comments about the community proposed plan is not characterized correctly. Who did this and who exactly. Who, how exactly was the community proposed plan developed, who wrote it, and who paid for it? Um, and then in 3-46, it talks about the design and construction of the proposed grade 9 to 12 charter school under the jurisdiction <coughs> of the Jefferson Union High School District. Um, and it asks whether it should be clarified whether or not a charter school would be necessary. It really needs to clarify whether a school would be necessary, period, regardless of whether, uh, I mean, a charter school or not a charter school. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, it should be clarified whether a school will be necessary. And, it, and then, so I'm, I'm not sure how to ask that. Doesn't matter to me what, you know, I mean, I think it needs to be a regular school. What, will the regular school be necessary? Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's a, a necessity issue. I do know that there are a lot of people in Brisbane that want a uh, a high school. I mean, even existing people seem to want a high school. Mm -hmm. So, well, um, and need are different, in my opinion. Right, but I'm not sure that is is need the uh, operative concept here. For me, this isn't really particularly an environmental issue. Yeah, I maybe we should just leave it alone. Well, it was addressed in the was mentioned yeah I'm just saying it should be clarified whether or not a school will be necessary but regardless of whether it's a charter school or not yeah and so we need to know whether it's a want to have or a must have and the draft EIR doesn't specify that based on okay. which plan it is R right, but if the plan calls for it, it's not really up to the CEQA person to determine if it was needed. It's up, that's a, I mean, that's a council decision and a school district decision, not a, if the plan says we're going to put a high school here, mm -hmm. it's not up to the, it, the CEQA document would say, I don't care what use, I mean, this is what Tony said, we don't care what uses that are out there, this is what we're studying. Mm -hmm. So the real question is, you should be asking council, and this is why I moved it here. The question I think you're asking council is, is this a needed use? Okay, my question is, if there are is n if there is no housing on the Baylands, right? Will a school be required? Well, if it okay. is by the city council. Wait, no, right. no I'm just saying, will it be required? And will it be safe? Mm -hmm. And if there is housing, will a school be required? And will it be safe? And I think the answer is from a, my understanding of the way the CEQA works is if the community plan calls for a, a school, it's not up to for them to determine if it's needed or not. Right. But, but, that's, but that, that's a community decision. 
as to where you would put it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my understanding too. Okay. That's, that, that's why, I, I mean, I think it's a legitimate question to ask. Okay. But I don't know if you're going to get a response in C from a CEQA perspective. CEQA, right. You're going to get a response from a, okay. a political perspective. That's good. Yeah. I mean, and that's I why that's why we wanted to capture the question and make sure it gets asked of the of the politicians, not of the environmental. Okay. Aspect. So wherever it's asked, I want to know: Is it required that we have a school? Right. So we can change it and for that purpose. And in the draft EIR, is it safe to have a school there? If there's no housing, is it still safe to have a school there? If we determine it's not safe for housing, is it safe for a school? That's a different question. Yeah, that's a different question. It's part which, of the same they, question. which they would say they're answering through their entire document whether or not uses are safe. Did they, anywhere did they answer whether it's safe or not? Well, they've gone through the whole thing on how you mitigate whatever hazards or whatever. So they would say that if you if you do everything you're supposed to do <coughs> of this document, all the uses, as it shows, is either you know less than significant impacts, or though there are some that are un. Yes. Significant and can't be mitigated, because I can't pronounce the other word. And so those would need um, overriding consideration to even do those. Okay. So my question then is, environmentally, are we meeting this, is, are the standards for having a school different than the standards for having any other kind of building there? Because and again, there I think are they would children. Say, I would say that they would say that if you do everything that's required for mitigation, the uses that were studied, and I think a school was one of those uses, would be avail would be available to be used. Do and if you don't agree with that from a use perspective, that becomes a political decision, not a CEQA decision. No. Does CEQA have a different standard for being able to build a school on a piece of toxic land versus okay. housing versus a Okay, so I, I guess, well, I, I guess the question is, does CEQA have a different standard for sh for school locations than other types of uses? We That, that I understand be put into a CEQA document. Whether or not you believe that the school should be there becomes a political decision. Right. So we, we will add that other question. Okay. Is, does, is there different requirements for schools versus other uses? Yes. And if so, can you explain what the differences are? Yes. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Anything else on this one? That would become under like. CEQA? Under yeah, that, that would become under three. Tell us, I know where. Well, wherever we have it. Where. So if we have it here, it's page 346. So we would put it under 346 and ask that question under 346. Does, does a school have different requirements for environmental, uh, different environmental requirements and other uses? And if so, what are those differences? Right. Thank you. And put it here. Okay. Okay. Whew, sorry. Uh, the next one is. That's why we're here, to try and get to the best question. 3-53, uh, delete references to the former owner of UPC property, yada, yada. Um, I don't know if it's CEQA or not, but I'd like them to please clarify who the exact property owners are, who the developer is, and what's the relationship between them. And I think from an environmental perspective, they'll say, we don't care who owns it or who's going to develop it. But from a council perspective, you may want council to define that for you. However, I believe this okay. I mean, I'm just trying to give you. I don't you know. Does CEQA require that? Uh, uh, you're right. It probably doesn't matter. No, it just it's all okay. you're doing is doing the environment on a project. So I can understand you asking council to have that definition. Uh -huh. Whereas I think the CEQA person would say it doesn't re who owns it does not impact the environment. Okay. Um, but maybe that could be rephrased because what you don't want to delete is the, you, the reference to UPC, but the reference to UPC as being a former owner. Context as a former owner. Yeah. Or are they still, or do they still own it? In other words, it's right. never really been really clearly stated who the heck owns it and what all the relationships are. And I feel like that should be really uh, made public. Because one of the things that CEQA depends on is that all the conditions of the law are met. 
we can deal with that later if it's a planning comment. Okay. Um, and three dash sixty seven, please provide information on any other agreements or commitments planned for this water for other future projects across the straight state that could possibly in any way impact this project. So I guess I don't know whether that goes under planning, but it also, you know, is a concern what happens if the if the water is not met, like if the conditions for the water are not met. Has so that, that's been discussed enough? Well, okay, so yeah, I understand it. So here's, here's the challenge from my perspective on that one is so they've come up with a method for meeting the water supply that they need. Mm -hmm. If that water supply is not met, then they have no water supply. If they want another water supply, they would have to go through another environmental process. Realistically, do you want them to go through that environmental process in this document, or would you like them to go through the environmental process at the time that this OI that the OIB agreement doesn't meet, doesn't get approved? Okay, I guess what I'm worried about is the o OID agreement gets approved and then they default because there isn't the water there because there are already other too many. But other once, projects. but once they don't have the water supply to for, for this project, then they can't build. And what if it's half built and there's no water? That's well, I guess the question would then be is what happens in our town if we have drought restriction? I I think so how do we phrase that into a question if it's addressed? Right, I, I, see, I think that's a, that's a question for council to deal with. Yeah, I don't think Not we for CEQA to deal with. Point. Okay. And that's why I put it, that's why I thought it would be better here because I think council needs to, and the community, more so that you know, council and the community, because I use them interchangeably, need to understand. Okay, so if this isn't, if this is a concern of ours, what are we going to do as a council and a community, and what will we approve, given these concerns? Mm -hmm. But from an environmental perspective, if they say that OID is going to provide them water, then they say, okay, we have to take that at, at faith, mm -hmm. just like we take at faith that it, the current building standards meet the needs for earthquakes. <laughs> whether whether you agree or not, <laughs> but that's that's the CEQA bar. Yeah. Okay. So, but the real question is, what do you do? Okay, council. If if OID defaults, what's your backup plan? Mm -hmm. And you, as a community member, may say, if you don't have a backup plan, then I'm concerned about approve you approving this project. Right. And that becomes a conversation with council, not a conversation with this document. Okay. That's why I put it there. Okay. Um, Three dash sixty eight. Please clarify why the property will not be required to have remediation regardless of uh, project approval. The, I think the answer you would get from that is until there's a project, they don't have what level to remediate it to. Okay. I think that's what I meant. Okay, okay. aesthetic. Well, what's funny about that is they're going to put residential, but because of the residentials on the second floor, they only have to remediate it to commercial anyway. So, what does it matter? Yeah, I think that's I mean, so like wrong. They just if they if they've got it, the system rigged so that they only have to do remediation level Z, then I don't know why don't they right. just do and, and and that's a conversation not for I mean CEQA says here's the bar. Yeah, we think the we as a community think the bar should be here. The difference in this bar is what the conversation about the project yeah, is with yeah, council. I, I, I understand. Okay, I I'm going to. I'm repeating. I apologize. All right, moment. let's move right I'm along. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I need to read this one. Yeah, please present the impacts of light pollution visually for Section 4A aesthetics and visual resources, um, and then also on 4A6, please prevent. Pr please present all of the view impacts. And I think that these should, I think that they need to go back in the draft DIR and present more of the view impacts and also present, properly present the impacts of the light pollution visually. This is uh, under aesthetics. So are we talking page six and? Well, it's on page two of the comments and it says, Aesthetics, visual, 
the very beginning, 4A, and it talks about it would be beneficial to identify any other potential aesthetic impacts by using computer program that could be used to stimulate simulate the predicted night lighting from the project Where on the city of Brisbane. Here. Right here. This paragraph. This model could also be used to identify any biological resource. That's impact. different than my tonight. I think when that is different than your tonight. Was that something you asked to be removed, Barbara? <coughs> I kind of just from what you sent uh, before you went on vacation. Yeah, I made changes today. I just put the printout on on. I'm using the one that I marked up. That's I, yeah. I, I see issues. No, I don't think this is so why did So why was that removed? Or was it put back into the... It would have only been deleted if someone asked me to delete it. I didn't. Okay. Okay, we, we'll, we'll put it in the document, in the teach quest. Okay. Mm. I, I think that we have not had a very good examination of the light impacts both visually and biologically. Um, and, and then, um, so that need, those questions need to be asked. Um, and then on A4.A-6, A um, please present view impact, all, please present a fuller spectrum of view impacts than the limited ones that are currently there. And that should be back in the description. Planning? No. No, in the 4A. But no, in the CEQA document. In the CEQA. And so should 4A-29. And then in 4-A-39, the in-ground uplights with diverter shields should be described in their function further explained and, and illustrated. And I think that belongs back in the CEQA as well. And then A, 4A-41, um, I think that needs to be reworded as a question and put back into put in both places. I'm not the one who mentioned that, but I think it's important. It's mine, but it seems a little... Um, you can go on. I okay. will, I'm going to try and look at All this. Right. The next one, uh, air quality, training for contractors and foremen. Um, I think it should be here. This was yours, Glenn. Yeah. But I think it also needs to be in here as rephrase. How can we be assured that the crew, that the, the con contractors, foremen, and crews will be trained? Uh, why wasn't this added as a mitigation measure? <coughs> so I think it's very important that they're trained, and I think it needs to be specified in the document as a mitigation measure that they are trained. Um, because really, it's they're the people who are actually doing the work. Um, and then on four, the next section, 4E-8, notes that approximately half the wastewater was found to be below the water table. This is important to consider, which is good planning comment. The comment that should be in the draft EIR is what is the impact of waste being below the water table? I think that's in there. Is already. it? Yeah. Did we it's ask in that? There in a couple places. Okay. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of discussion of intrusion of the bay into the landfill. Yeah, I think it's. And we said, what is the impact? Yeah. Okay. I sure think so. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, I'll look while you're. Okay. Talking. Next one is um, on that four e dash thirty nine. Um, I think is really important, and I think that these should be framed as questions so that they get answered of like, um, 
who will do the inspection? Why was seven, the Richter scale of seven chosen as the threshold instead of 6.5? And why is there not a deadline for the implementation? So for E39, that whole section <laughs> needs to be reworded as questions and put back into the draft EIR because they are really important things. Uh, it, the document does fail to address who will do the inspection, who will be implementing the mitigation measures, and when on what time frame, and why was 7 on the Richter scale chosen as the threshold instead of 6.5 or 6.9 or seven plus one. Um, and then on uh, 4E-47, uh, paragraph two refers to the use of wick drains. Please not consider, but please address where will this highly contaminated water go and how will it be processed? And that needs to go back into the questions um, on this. I think it is in C Corps. Is I it? would have to do an extensive, exhaustive search at this moment to tell you for sure, but I think it is in there. But uh, E forty seven. Nope, it's not in here. Oh, okay. Are they getting that for three EIR recommend for you? Okay. Well, they were, I mean, and then I see that, yep. but it doesn't ask the question of... What do you do with the contaminated water after it's out of the ground? If you do decide to use the wick drains, where where is the contaminated water going to go, and how will it be processed? Okay. I mean, I think that's what the, I, when, we, when it was written in here, I think that's what the neg possible neg negative effects of the wick drain. Right, but I want specifics. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then in Section 4... F, greenhouse gas, please clarify whether or not the document recognizes Highway 101 as a source of existing GHG emissions in Brisbane. That really it is a question. It does. It does? Yeah, it does. It does? It does. Okay, so we can strike that part. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the next section, the pipeline safety, and, it, and uh, while it should be in the planning section, um, in the draft EIR, it should be how will the Kinder Morgan or the, the pipes, the Kinder Morgan pipes, be monitored during all phases of construction and what safety mitigations will be in place specifically for that pipeline or any other pipelines they might have in use or not, no longer in use. Can we add that? Back in the C Corps, yeah. Yeah, and would and phrase it as a question of how how they will be monitored uh, for safety. Um, then the next page on section 4H, surface water and hydrology. Um, the very first question is the DER notes that pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers, etc. My question is, how will this be monitored and mitigated? So while it should be here in the planning part, in the draft EIR, I want to know how it will be monitored and how it will be mitigated. And then under enforcement, um, <coughs> you know, Mary's question was, is the city of Brisbane prepared to do this? How will it be enforced and everything like that? Um, and I want to add who will pay for it and what if the developer defaults. Yeah. Um, and then um, in the section where H 4H22 development area will increase urban pollutants, the materials that are used to construct buildings should be considered <coughs> to limit the impact of non-point source pollutants during the planning process. Yeah. And one of my questions is, <coughs> in the draft EIR, have the construction materials, the, the creation of the construction materials been taken into account 
on the impacts area-wide. So for example, um, there'll be lumber use. Has that been taken into account, the deforestation, so that kind of stuff. <coughs> so is there any accountability um, environmentally on the amount of materials and where the source of the materials are on the pro the fr from to build this project. We did um, ask. Um, I know orally we asked if um, that the DER use life cycle assessment. Um, don't remember whether or not I saw that <coughs> in the paper text. Do you remember, Glenn? If you saw that in the paper text? I'm sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> Poor Glenn. I apologize. No, no, no. I remember no. working on that, the embodied energy. Yeah. Um, and then I found some sightings for it, so it should be. I think that did make it in there, the embodied energy, a request for life cycle assessment, embodied energy. Uh -huh. The sustainability um, committee is, is yeah. also making recommendations along those lines. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm sure we're not going to. Okay. Um, May I interrupt just to yes. say that I did, um, you were asking about the landfill and bay intrusion, weren't you? Um, the part about, uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. Mm. I was trying to find. What is the impact of the wastewater being below the water table? What is the impact of the waste being below the water table? That one? Yeah, I think, I don't know, there's there's a whole section that talks about leachate recharge from the bay. This is in the DEIR comments on page 29. I think it's pretty, pretty covered. Um, Mary did a good job on that section. Most of these comments, I think, are hers. Um, this page talks about bay water recharging the, the um, leachate by coming underneath the landfill. So, so I think it's pretty well covered. Okay. Um, so construction materials, have they been taken into account on impacts area-wide? Yeah, when we asked about embodied energy and life cycle, I don't know that we necessarily included sourcing yeah. it aspect in there. So maybe you could just add a few words about sourcing. Yeah, and like, you know, the net amount of lumber that's going to be used, how, what's it going to deplete, the, where's the steel going to come from, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then in 4H29, um, prior, to de prior to development, a system-wide drain improvements plan should be approved by the City Council. That was Mary's suggestion, and I agree with that. And the question that I want to ask in the DIRR is how will the drainage system handle everything before and during construction? Is there, I mean, right now we have a really bad drainage problem even out on uh, Beattie and the freeway on-ramp from the soils processing plant. They go out and they wet down the streets to clean them and then they turn around and go back and clean them and they make they just so now all the dirt becomes really slick mud on the road surface because it just they just <laughs> kind of grind it into the pavement and it's really slippery when it's wet so i really want to know what they're going to do about drainage before and during construction not necessarily after so how will the drainage system handle everything before and during construction? Um, and then for H34, we talk about, uh, the again, about the pesticides, herbicides, and, and fertilizers, um, and how they should use toxic substances as a last resort. Natural alternatives should be explored to prevent further contamination. I want the draft DIR to ask, what are the natural alternatives that can be used and what is their effectiveness? Um, on page, the next one is I, 4I-19, policy 27, centrally located facilities. Um, 
Could you please define centrally located facilities? Do you want me to add that on yep. the list of definitions? I do. Um, I for I twenty eight policy one fifty two slope stability. We really haven't addressed a lot of slope stability in the draft EIR as much as we should. And did we ever address the section about the slope stability above the lag lagoon? I remember we talked about it, but I don't remember seeing a comment. Yeah, the old Tulare slide. I think of it as the Tulare slide. I don't know yeah. if that's its proper designation. I remember writing it. I'll double check. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one is I-29 remediation of the site. The DER states that is consistent without addressing the phase of development remediation. Yeah, actually, for I-28 is in both places. Okay. Yeah, policy 152, so it slopes to designate ice fell soils open space will not prevent a slide from damaging the development. The proposed location of the high school is at the base of ice fell soil, which will be in, be in danger of damage if due to potential slide barriers to the entry of the south. So it's in both places. Okay. Thank you, Stuart. But did they address the slide potential from Tulare Hill to the lagoon? Natalie's going to go back and double yeah. check on that. Okay. Um, so the next part is the the draft EIR needs to address and clarify timing and sequencing of uh, remediation of the site. And it doesn't. It's very vague about it. So it really needs to address the timing and the sequencing um, and, and clarify that. And uh, it's brought up here on I-29, remediation of the site. Uh, okay, I-37. So, um, okay, what, can I ask a question about that yeah. one? Mm -hmm. So if, if you, what you get back from an answer is that they will remediate the site as they're building. I mean, I think that's what, the, I think that's the CEQA requirement is that we that they remediate sites as they build those sites that's why it's here on the planning question which is I think you're looking for something more than remediating remediating it incrementally well I I think it should be here in the planning section but I think in the draft EIR part we should ask them to specify and clarify the sequencing of the remediation of each of the proposed plants. But I think what they'll say is that they don't know because they don't know what the construction will be. Within each construction, I mean, are they going to... Well, you remediate, I think what the, an I, I mean, I, I, I will put it in there, but I, what, I, what I'm, I think the answer is going to be something to the effect of, we don't know when things are going to get built. Right. And things will be remediated as they're built. I, I want to specify, are they going to be remediated before they're built or as they're built? Or once the plan is approved or when? So I kind of want to know really specifically, is the cart going to go before the horse or after the horse? Or is it going to go alongside the horse and be a side cart? Okay. And there's no clarification of that. It's very loosey-goosey throughout the entire document. So since it's a program EIR, I think that they can kind of spec clear up some of that, clarify some of that timing issues or what they propose. Um, and then on I-37, uh, what connectivity is there planned with Central Brisbane? Because they're talking about the Geneva Interchange and how Geneva is located on Daly City in San Brisbane. And, um, Clearly, Geneva Avenue will not pro provide connectivity with Brisbane, making the statement clearly inconsistent. So my question is, what connectivity is planned, is there planned for central Brisbane? So the comment that you, we've included in the EIR is, in order for the project to be consistent, in order for the project to be consistent with this policy, sorry, in order for, this, for the project to be consistent this policy would need to have a north, south, east, west connector with the bay lines. That was what you put in as the mitigate as the potential mitigation to make this policy consistent. Okay. So that's already in the planning document or in the EIR document. Okay, so the connectivity is already there. Right, because it says it, I mean very specifically it says 
for I-37, policy 436. Uh -huh. In order for the project to be consistent, this policy would need to have north-south, actually I should just put this project. This project would need to have north-south and east-west connector with the day line. So that's, that's what the OC, that's what your, your committee said they would like to be part of the CEQA document. Okay. Um, I-49, um, how does the BER address the mitigation of litter? Doesn't really. So it needs to address the mitigation of litter and odor, but litter in particular. Uh, and probably odor in case they want to move the Sirachi processing plant up here. <laughs> um, okay. Next one. <coughs> so the chapter on noise and vibration does not address the psychological and uh, physiological effects of hearing loss and the public should be advised of these concerns but I really think that they haven't adequately addressed that at all in the EIR. Did you ever um, find more information on sound power level? I found some more definitions on sound power level and I found a lot of information about how long term um, noise affects hearing over time which I sent to Natalie which I think you included right it's in the right yeah it's in the yeah, yeah. yeah. right it's certainly included. we could find oh. more stuff on it but okay. that was as much as I found at this point I didn't look for it so I okay can't. it's in there right okay. it's on page four it's on page 42 um, awesome and then in 7.1 the APA says sustainability yada yada um, The Brisbane community, yeah, why, I guess my question was, why are they, please provide the source of the statement that, you know, Brisbane people have aspirations for consumption. I, I found that to be really kind of. Right, so the, prob the problem is with the sustainability, they're using different definitions by different people. So those definitions by those people are, in fact, their definitions. This committee disagrees with those definitions. That's an issue not with how the document was written, but is how the city council and then the sustainability committee is looking at sustainability. That's why most of the sustainability stuff got put in here. Uh -huh. Because there, the idea is that this is the definition. The definition is the definition. Right. You may disagree with the definition, and that's to have the conversation with council say, this definition is not adequate for Brisbane. Yeah. yeah. Then the very last thing is on 7.2, please provide the benchmarks. It says no actual criteria based on numerical facts or benchmarks for sustainability are provided. So I guess I'd like them to provide the benchmarks that they are talking about for sustainability. And that is actually in the, should go back in here as well. Please provide the benchmarks that you're talking about. The thing is that there's the sustainability is not included in CEQA, so so I think the place for those sustainability comments is planning comments. Okay. Right. So okay. So you're talking about the principles, uh, the you know the ten the ten one planet principles. Well, those benchmarks are being worked on by the sustainability committee. Okay. Right. There's no way that they're going to be able to provide that in part of this document, okay. unless you want Glenn to be having meetings every night for the next. No, and then the last one, the page 7.3, we already decided to um, strike that one. Yep. I'm done. Huh? Yeah. Um, I had one well, thing. But that's okay, but that's in your CEQA document. Yeah. What do you mean? We struck it in both places. It, it's in both. It's written in both places. And we struck it in both places. Yeah, Michelle's just saying she wants to strike it here as well. Oh. Okay. Um, Does it make sense in the context of the sentence? Okay. Sorry. So um, if nobody else has anything they want to talk about, I have one little thing that um, I want to think about out loud. Um, 
I think we all remember my fabulously smart, snarky comment about 20% reduction in pay. <laughs> now, <laughs> yes, we remember that one. <laughs> that didn't make it in, and, I, and I'm just fine with that. <laughs> but the essential point of that um, I want to make is that the law is the law, but there's a lot of wiggle room in the law. Otherwise, we wouldn't have lawyers and we wouldn't have this process, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, um, you have to employ the golden rule that says, would I be OK with somebody doing this to me? And there are a lot of places throughout this document that there's enough latitude in the laws and the rules, but they have failed, I think, to, to do the, the, hu the human test, right? And I would like to make some form of comment <laughs> along those lines that, um, you know, if th they should be at least personally, morally beholden to actually think about whether or not they would want these things done to themselves and, and their community, even if that's not part of the law. And I'm wondering what the rest of the committee thinks about that. You're talking about the developers should be required to think about this, or the consultants, or, or who? Well, you know, I, you got a good point, Glenn, that this could come in at multiple levels. <laughs> I mean, what I would see is like maybe an opening paragraph to, you know, if, you know, when we're submitting the comments, mm -hmm. we're going to submit 55 pages of comments, we should put a letter together, we should at least have a paragraph of introduction, maybe the paragraph of introduction to say, you know, we understand that CEQA has certain requirements set out, set, set out by law, however, as a, you know, we, we also believe, or we also, I guess, believe that, you know, there's also other there's other purposes mm -hmm. for development and there's other purposes that humans have when they look at their built environment and those other purposes should be taken into account and at least that way it gets into the council into the record for the council to look at as well mm -hmm. so we can work you know I can see us working on a paragraph like that as the opening introduction if that's what the committee yeah. would like uh -huh. I like it um, yeah. my recommend my my spec my recommendation is that you know with all the changes let staff go back i know we're not gonna have another meeting prior to this mm -hmm. but maybe we could have two a subcommittee of two take another look at everything before we submit it so that way we could just have one more set of eyes to make sure that everything got captured in the way that at least two pa two people on the committee heard it tonight okay does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah and so we just let need to know which two would be the designated subcommittee. I'll do I it. I could go for three. In fact, it could have three people as a designated subcommittee because, in fact, it is a seven-person committee. So this, this is going to happen this week, right? We are going to do it um, this week and early next. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. So that's two of us. Elena, you want two or so? <laughs> She's looking at me like you must be crazy. But thank you for asking. <laughs> Okay. So Michelle, Glenn, and Barbara right. as the subcommittee, we will send it to okay. when we are done, and we'll try and draft a nice paragraph. Believe me, it will be need to be edited. Okay. So we're talking about doing this by email. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have just a couple more things, and then we are done. We need to do an approval of the minutes from the last meeting, um, and. One of the things that I wanted to update, um, this is the last meeting, right? Yes. Um, I didn't print mine out. They should be I'll there in your packet this morning. They were right there. Um, no. I can give you mine. Oh, okay. Would you like mine, Ellen, Barbara? I just wanted to let you know, because you brought it up, yeah. that we had a long discussion about to plant or not to plant based on the drought. And Mountain Watch is continuing to plant up to a certain level because the, the size of the plants that we plant 
I, we won't have as good a survival rate as we would in a wet year, but they won't be plantable if we don't plant them. So we're continuing to plant. Um, and there is some moisture in the soil. The area that Peter, and we had this discussion with Peter too, he came to our board meeting, and we also determined there that we should go ahead and plant judiciously, and Peter was gonna work with Joe Cannon on what should be planted and, and where limited, not a lot compared to what we would do if it was a wet year. But the areas that they're planting up there are um, on this side of the mountain. So they're moister, they have some fog drift, they have some, you know, Lots. yeah, and we won't, it's true, we won't have the survival rate we wouldn't have in a wet year. And so that was what we determined on that to let you know. But it was a very good question to ask and we had a very good discussion about it. Um, is there any changes to the minutes or is it everything? Um, I sent a page of uh, stump removal, alternative stump removal things to Natalie. Um, I don't think we want to go over that tonight, but it oh. it did make it as far as Natalie. Okay. And uh, we might want to look at that next time. Um, also in number six, members do, you've got Sean listed twice. I don't think that's correct. Under six, miscellaneous. Oh, oh, okay. You've got Sean listed twice. And Kima, I thought, was for four years. So I don't think that's correct either. I was the only one who took a two-year term. We're just making stuff up. <laughs> you are making stuff up. And we apologize. I'll get with Sherry and make sure that we get the right names in the right spot. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so with that, is, is there a motion? I move. Second. Approval of the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And then um, is there any other items that need to be discussed before we adjourn? Let's just make sure we have a meeting date for the next time. That oh, I that's know. a good idea. I um, and if I'm not mistaken, we like to meet on the second week of the month, mm -hmm. which City Hall is closed on February 12th. Because it's Abraham Lincoln's birthday. We still ah. think he was a fine gentleman and we should celebrate the emancipation of slaves. Yes, uh, okay, so when do you wanna meet? The following week. The following week? Uh, I was gonna go for February of 2015. I I've had over uh, a time um, February 19th? Well, we've been, I, I'm gonna be gone, but Natalie will be here, so that'd be fine with me. The 19th is not good for me. Oh. Um, well, should we meet on the 13th? Um, do, does, planning com does the planning committee, does commission doesn't meet the second, right? They meet the first and third? <laughs> I don't know. You, you've gone more often than I have. <laughs> That's true. Um, so if the planning commission does not meet. Second and fourth, they meet second and fourth, council meets first and third. Okay, so then the planning commission will be meeting on the 13th. Are we talking about a Monday? No, that's a Thursday. Okay. That's not the second Thursday, is it? Yeah. The 12th is the second Wednesday, the 13th is the second. I'm looking at my little pocket calendar. Okay. Are we meeting on Thursdays now? No, we're no. meeting on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Wednesdays are the Monday before. Oh, okay. And then the 19th doesn't work for you. Yeah. Um, the 5th, I'm not here again, but. Is that a Wednesday? That's a Wednesday. 5th is fine with me. That works for me. Why aren't you here? I'm going to be. Why? At, Tell us. <laughs> um, there is a conference down in Long Beach um, related to city work that I will be at. So I can learn about things as exciting as what the state's going to do, do to us next. 
Okay. Well, we're going to, you know, you know what's on the agenda. So. I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to miss it all. Okay. We can tell you're devastated. I can watch it on my iPad if you'd like and call in. <laughs> Promise. Just make sure Natalie's all prepped with the answers. I'm sure she will be. Okay. Okay. Um, meeting's adjourned. I really want to know, Stuart, that you are watching this meeting on your iPad instead of going out after your conference. Yeah, no tequila for you. Wait, wait, wait. Because you never know, my wife might.